Hi everyone and welcome to the channel. My name is Bork. In today's video, we'll be covering a beginner's guide for World Flipper. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. It really helps the channel. I appreciate you being here. One of first things being is jumping in a story right here and getting as far as possible, even getting as far as to chapter two and beating it. I think that's going to be a good starting point for most folks. And you should be able to upgrade your characters fairly decently just from leveling through story. And the reason why I recommend getting to at least chapter two before you start grinding anything, and that's mostly because you're going to be getting like these orbs right here. So this smile of forest drops from chapter one and this little mirage drops at chapter two. And it's pretty good because it's both providing an attack wide buff to everyone, memory mirage, and then HP buff to everyone. So that's gonna be my biggest recommendation at the beginning. You don't have to really focus on gear. Here is something that you look at at the late game. Next thing is looking at your leader. This is quite possibly the most important position in the entire game. And the reason being is because your leader is going to be providing the biggest buffs to everyone. So for example, Kelty right here is going to be providing 60% attack buff to win units only after she gets 10 plus more combo. And she's also going to be providing a 40% attack buff to everyone as well, which is absolutely insane. So she's going to be providing 100% attack buffs to everyone whenever she hits like the ideal combo range. And then she's going to be increasing her own attack by 80% whenever she hits higher combo. Obviously this character, Kelty, she's going to want to be in a combo centric team. So you're going to want to build her in that way. And then the next thing is looking Looking at your other main party members. They don't have like the leader notification on their slot, but the reason why is because you can see Fury right here has 514 attack. And even though she's a support, then she's going to be providing everyone else more wind buffs, right? Because plus 10% HP is specifically states wind. And whenever you're in the levitate place, she's going to provide this buff. Now, some of you might be wondering, I'm not using one particular element because I'm using result right here. The only reason why I'm keeping result around and look at this, he has less attack. It's because of his skill right here. So make sure to pay attention to your subslot skills. His skill is going to be increasing debuffs, increasing attack, increasing elemental resistance, which is really nice and provides a little bit of recovery. And then not to mention his abilities later on, once I upgrade them, he's going to be providing even more attack buffs to other units. And then he's also going to be providing even more attack buffs upon his skill being unlocked. So it's just something to look into in case you're like, oh, do I have to run a completely mono team? Yes, ideally you can, but also make sure to look at like the character's abilities and what they can actually do. I'm using Heartleaf right here because I don't have any other wind units and she's gonna be providing a little bit of like, you know, wind resistance and some poison damage. It's nothing too crazy, but it, look at her attack. It's also at 374. I'm not entirely sure if like the attack buffs or like the actual attacks for characters matter when you're looking into the overall party's like, you know, stat, but I would say mostly look at like the actual party members like skills for the sub slots specifically because some skills are kind of useless. I like Connor right here because he provides like pierce damage and he's also wind type and pierce is actually a good team to center yourself around to now that we've gone over like some of the team dynamics let's go ahead and jump into when you get stuck in story all right so if you can't get any farther you've upgraded your team a little or you optimize them as best as you can i want us to jump into events and then i want us to do kaleidoscope exp whenever you are absolutely stuck and we'll talk about how you use like these little water and crystals right here after you like do this you should be getting large amounts of exp just by completing the stage and then also start farming out the kaleidoscope wind or whichever element that you are doing i'm doing wind because kelty is my main leader it just makes sense for me so after that go into units let's say you have like extra like water or a blue crystal right here to upgrade characters i don't recommend using this unless it's like for desperate situations you should only use this if you have to upgrade characters ideally you save it for you know upgrading future characters you're gonna definitely get this in abundance and the reason you get this is because you're over leveling your units. So essentially you're building up EXP in the background and technically you're never wasting EXP. So let's say you're like, all right, I understand. I won't use that stuff unless I really have to. Then you go into the mono board right here and I want us to upgrade our main party first. You can worry about your sub slots later. Of course, upgrade your sub slots if you really need the power, but ideally focus on your main units. And the things that I want us to get straight into is getting like these larger statues right out the gate. So you've been seeing that my Kelty has like a different card. That's not her base card. I'll talk about it later. But once I unlock ability three for Kelty, she essentially became a monster and she's going to be increasing her damage much further. Now you can see that I upgraded some of like the minor slots right here. That was just because I was heavily focusing on getting Kelty as strong as possible. I suggest doing that for your main party members. And then if you're wondering what I meant by like the card and stuff, the way Kelty looks right now, she doesn't have like this 
his base art. She actually has different forms to, of herself and just like how Furia has like a different art for herself as well. And this is because I upgraded her as much as possible for her mana board. And usually this unlocks after you get three abilities on their actual board taken and then that'll make them significantly stronger. And I would say the mana board is probably the largest upgrade to your characters that you can provide them outside of like general EXP upgrades, all right? So after you've been like upgrading their mana boards and everything, you've increased their levels as much as you needed. I was actually able to go from like level 30 to like level 60, just jumping between Kaleidoscope EXP and then Kaleidoscope Win, or let's say you do Kaleidoscope EXP and Kaleidoscope Light. It really doesn't matter. I just stuck around here and then eventually I was able to jump back into story. And when you're in story, I would recommend going up until chapter six, all right? Once you get around here, you can sort of stop. And the reason for that is if you go into boss battles right here, you're going to unlock Orochi. And Orochi is probably the boss that everyone's farming. And that's because you want to get Murakumo right here, all right? He's gonna be one of the best characters that everyone can get. And let's go ahead and jump into the spreadsheets right here. And just know I have like all of the information right here in case you wanna read it like in a more visual format. And then here is going to be Murakumo. If you look at him, he's going to be only obtainable via Orochi co-op. He's gonna be an S unit on your main and S unit on your unison slot, which is like your sub slots. And these will be providing 50% attack and 50% skill gauge, which is really nice. So it means like you get your unison like skill or your skills much quicker. And then not to mention, he's going to be increasing, you know, your attack buffs at plus 60% by 30 seconds when the battle begins. And then he's also gonna be providing like some float buffs as well, which is really nice. He's gonna be one of like the better characters that you can get for absolutely for free. Just know he doesn't pair with Kelty that well because Kelty technically is a combo character. He does perfectly pair with Furia because both of them are going to be float based characters, which is really nice. And you can also look at like, you know, cookie cutter teams right here by Pecan. So thank you so much. And you can actually get like this owl dude you can see right here absolutely for free. And if you have Mew and you have Kelty, that's like one of the best teams ever because Mew actually has the capability of like homing in on enemies. I want to show that really quick because she is probably one of the best wind units for any physical related character. You can see she rushes to the nearest enemy and deals wind damage. I think that's really broken. If you see anything where it says rush to an enemy, I feel like that is a crazy unison support skill because that means that you can essentially have your attacks be close range because there's way too many units that close range damage. And she's one of the few units that can actually home in on characters or enemies. And I think that's just a rare ability that no one else has. And another thing in case people are running like what is power flip so whenever you see like the flippers turn into like, yellow or green or light indigo sort of color on the flippers that means you're triggering a power flip so it took me a while to figure that out and of course like generating fever it's much different let's go ahead and fight a boss so you guys can see it i don't know if i can tackle orochi he's definitely one of the harder bosses i'm gonna go ahead and tackle regitair right here he's gonna be one of the characters that i recommend to farm later on down the road because he provides an easy to achieve like float weapon which is going to be this dude the the calamity blade and you can max it out really quickly because it only takes these little silver regitair coins or whatever and you can see it's going to be providing plus 20 percent attack bonus whenever a unit is in levitate slash float levitate also means float in the game i just want to like say that really quick in case some of you are like oh what's some quick gear for a float team like murakomo can use this gear and i highly recommend it just go here into solo play i can only do like two more runs per day you can do a max of three but technically you can do co-op as many times as you want let's go ahead and get this started and just go ahead and describe the game for some folks in case you're wondering what are particular you know triggers for certain skills right the flippers you can see right here they're obviously changing colors that's how you know you're generating like power flip and then your power flips are dependent on how much combo you are generating so you can see there once i generate like roughly a combo like the flippers are almost yellow and then i can trigger for example kelty skill because more combo for her means that she's going to be dealing more damage. So in some ways you want to build like a combo centric power flip team in some ways. That way you can take advantage of those things. But usually people just build like combo specific teams, power flip specific teams. And then for levitate slash float teams, obviously they're going to be levitating or staying in the air much longer. And that's why you want to build them in the first place. But we easily do short work of Regitaire right here. And he was actually really difficult when I was first starting out the game. But after grinding it out a little bit longer, that's where things got much easier. But that's like an overall description 
version of the UI attack menu. It's like between the flippers and then fever and combo bar. I guess you could say like the fever and combo bar sort of go hand in hand. So you can sort of build teams around that. That's like some things that you should focus on where it's like, hey, after you've built a team where it's like one particular element, for example, and for our situation, we're building one particular win team. We can go about the base of like, all right, now that we've built a win team and we have like the basis of a decent win leader, then we can go about perfecting things where it's like, does Feria, a levitate healer, actually pair with someone like Kelty? In the beginning, it really doesn't matter, but it's just some things to like sort of min max. And then let's go over like one more thing in case people are like, hey, you know, like what are some things that I can do in the background? If you go into missions right here and then you go into regular, you can actually scroll through the different missions. You can actually get some decent gear for clearing the EX missions. If you can clear chapter six EX, you can actually get 50% EXP gain and 5% mana gain whenever you complete a stage, which is pretty cool. So in case you want to save yourself for grinding much heavier later, you could go up to chapter six EX and get this weapon. And in case you don't know how to unlock EX, just go into home. After you go into quest right here and you complete an entire chapter, you'll unlock this EX area right here. And one of the places that I also recommend farming once you can get to it, stage four right here, EX41. And that's going to be because you can get Albert right here, who's going to be a decent forest unit that we covered earlier. And like the team compositions that you saw right here, right? Albert is right there. The only reason though I don't advise like farming EX heavily is because this thing is going to cost a whopping 14 stamina. And this stuff doesn't come cheap. I've farmed hundreds of stamina. I've used all of my stamina flasks and potions right here. You can see I'm at zero trying to get this dude. So if you're trying to farm for something in EX mode, just be very careful. I think your stamina can be best used over here in Kaleidoscope because you'll constantly be player ranks up. Whereas farming in story doesn't really do that. Kaleidoscope is just much better for, you know, EXP to stamina return in my opinion, in case you decide to go down that route. When it comes to portal, don't do anything when it comes to touching the weapon gotcha, because there's going to be so many different ways to essentially get weapons in this game via the boss battles. Let's go ahead and use my ticket right here for five star exclusive portal. I think we got one just by like logging in and going through like the events and stuff. I really like how world flipper, if you reroll a decent account, you don't really have to force yourself into doing more pulls. I do want to get a Mew because she has a crazy ability, that homing ability that we talked about earlier. Can I get Mew right here or will this turn into something else? No, this looks like a fire character. We got Bianca right here. She looks pretty cool. You know what? I'm just going to go ahead and do a 10 pull and I don't recommend doing this. All right. In fact, I recommend saving for limited units only. Don't pull the normal gotcha if you have like a pretty crazy team already because most of like the normal gotcha characters that we have, if you pull something, most of it's already pretty decent. So let's go ahead and pull right here and see if we can get anything nice. Let's go ahead and see what we get here. Any rainbows, please. Oh my goodness, 5% rates. Please don't lie to me. Give me a fake out or something. We got Marnie right here. All right, give me Mew. All right. Oh, okay. We have the chance. We have the chance. Hit two of them. Hit two of them. No, you only hit one of them. All right, that's fine. You can fake me out. Oh, we already got Bianca. It's okay. It's okay. We, we still take those. Lulica. Okay, Mew. Mew, please. Mew, can you be Mew? All right, that's Jake. Hi, Jake. Nice to meet you. Can I please get Mew? Oh, do we have the chance here? I don't think I get any more four stars because the rest of like the balls did not glow like yellow and whatnot. Unless like it does like a fake out thing. We got Bonnie right here. Please don't make me pull again. All I want is Mew, dude. I will pull again for Mew. I have a problem and I feel like I actually need Mew in the game. Please. No, I need Mew for my Kelty to actually function. Going back into Gambler's Fallacy. Please do not do this. This is probably the worst thing I'm doing for the beginner's guide. Never do this. All right. Like I'm saying, please save your jewels for limited time events. I just want Mew because she perfectly centers around any wind team that I want to use or any like wind character that has like, you know, the ability to do close range attacks. So we get way more golds on this one. This one definitely looks much better. We get Renor right here. All right. What else can we get? Please Mew. Any Mew? Miles. We got Miles. All right. Mew, please drop. All right. Who are you? Is this Mew? I don't know what you are. Oh, this is going to be Helga. I heard she was okay. She's going to be a wind unit. Hey, please get Mew. You're a dragon. All right. You look pretty cute, but I want Mew in my life. All right. That's Rams, dragon of ether please elza you definitely look like a waifu you please come home okay another copy of helga please just have mercy on me i just need one copy of mew any copy of mew would absolutely do all right we get a gold right here pretty sure mew is a three star i'm asking for a three star unit is this too much to like 
want? Please, game. All right, we got Faf right here. And we get another Faf. All right, well, that is gonna be the summons. I'm not going any deeper. I'm just trying to get a character that apparently is like much harder to get than I thought. I really need to check this really quick. How rare was Mew? I'm pretty sure. Yeah, she's a freaking three star. Why can't I get her? Well, one day I'm gonna get her this coveted three star unit that would make my Kelty team absolutely broken so she can actually land her UBs on auto. Yeah, that's gonna be the beginner's guide today. It's essentially just going through story, going through kaleidoscope whenever you're having some issues, making sure to match up your teams, whether it's going to be a levitate team, a combo based team, or a power flip team. We talked about what power flipping in is essentially getting your flippers up to a certain color and building enough combo to actually get the power flip going on. Power flip, you'll see the text as it's going through the game and you'll be building fever based off of combo. You could say fever and combo is the same thing. And levitate is just floating in the battlefield a little bit longer. But anyways, if you made it this far in today's video, consider subscribing, dropping a like, leaving a comment. Follow me on Twitch, follow me on Twitter. Once we hit 27,000 farmers, I'll be doing a giveaway. Thanks so much for watching. Have yourself a fantastic day. Do not summon like me because that is a beginner rookie mistake in my opinion. But thanks so much. Have yourself a fantastic day and see you in the next one.